Can you hear me? Sorry for the wait. It usually takes a minute for the delay to catch up and I'm trying to... Someone just tweeted me? Oh. Okay. Tagoka Tagodina. I never know how to pronounce that name. Um, but yeah, and I'm trying to make sure that the stream is actually working on my end. And it says that it is. Okay. So, for starters, um, since this is sort of kind of a um, how I do things, I am using OBS. I have a set of um, different type of structures I can utilize for when I stream different games. But when I actually edit, in terms of video productions, usually use Premiere Pro, which I picked up from a DV major at my old university. So, typically speaking, uh, when I edit, I have uh, my three main quadrants, and this is the source and effects controls, the actual playback for the video, and um, my workstation at the bottom. Now, I do have two monitors, and usually I make use of them, but for this particular stream, I'm going to keep it all in one section because I can't, well, I probably could stream both, um, nah, don't worry about it. So yeah, so currently I'm working on, um, let me turn the system volume down. I'm working on a, a video that I'm going to post to YouTube asking users um, their opinion on which shader should I use for a Minecraft series that I plan on doing in the future. So I went ahead and I imported two, well three things actually. One is this image that you're seeing here with the Minecraft, the five worlds logo at the top right. Uh, and an audio that you know states before you watch this I played back and I saw that it looked kind of weird so just keep that in mind for me when I do this I usually keep in mind that uh, this is a simple simple video as you can see I have just the, the little intro for the image and the audio and I basically just have the video that is gonna be playing so I would love your opinions on this um, as you can also see, I'm using Optifine 1.710 HDU, the B7 edition, to try to help. Oh, there's a bird outside my window. Try to help with the performance. And as you can see, we're getting a steady 40 frames per second. Um, and that's what I pre pretty much use for, you know, playing back and watching the video before I start the editing process. Um, if I can look through here, I have the drop down for the audio. I can see where my commentary or what, you know, when I'm talking, I can see when it dies down. So I may actually go and look at this area. For instance, this is a part of the video where the chunks did not load properly and I, it really added nothing to the video. So as you can see further on. Extra pack. That's weird. That's odd. So there's pretty much nothing of importance in this section. It is a good, um, let's see, when does this start? It starts at 144 and pretty much ends after, uh, at, at 221. That's pretty much like nearly half a minute. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use my cutting tool. And th this is the standard. This is the basis for editing. No matter what program you use, Camtasia, um, Windows Movie Maker, uh, Cam Studio, uh, etc. So, uh, Sony Vegas Pro. Uh, where's my cutting tool at? Right here. So this is the razor tool. I can you know, use my keyboard to press C. And now that I have this area lined up, what I can actually do is cut. And then probably cut right here and just say what I'm going to do. 
So, and I select this area, I delete it, move the part over to the left, close it down so it fits and line up. I have snap guides on, which means it'll snap to other media in the timeline. This is the timeline, by the way. So I can actually see how this looks now. Um, that's odd. Let's try rebooting the world. So from here, I can cut from the reboot section right back to where we're in the game again. Cut, delete, snap over to the left, and we're back to being golden. Texture. Um, that's odd. Let's try rebooting the world. Okay, much better. So now that I have the locations for what video shows where, I don't like the transitions. And typically this is a very simple video, so I would not really care either way. But because, again, I like making things difficult for myself, I'm going to go into the effects tab. And I'm going to go into the video's transitions and find some dissolvers. So what I can do from here is see how um, a cross dissolve looks. And I drag it over to the video section. Video 1, audio 1, this is a video transition, so it goes in the video area. From here, I go back, and I see how the fade-in looks now. Sure. Um, that's odd. Let's try rebooting the world. Okay. So I like the first one. I'm going to see what it looks like with the second one. Rebooting the world. Okay, much better. Now, to me, that works very fine, but again, the audio from the clicks of the Minecraft menu is also kind of annoying for me, especially if you can zoom in a bit closer. See how there's a, there's a lot of noise, well, not a lot, but a few noises towards the uh, transition area. I can actually go into the audio transitions, go into crossfades, and do exponential fades. So if you know anything about mathematics, you'll know that, you know, exponential fade or exp anything exponential is you know any type of variable or constant to a, a power you know like 2 to the power of 4 and if you put that on a rectangular coordinates plane you're going to see a quick like a, a quick growth and then it, it steadies off into a very high value so what this basically means is a fade in or fade out for simple terms it's a fade in fade out so I'm just gonna add one here and probably add one here but I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna make this fade shorter on the right side because I start speaking again really soon. So let's see how that sounds rather than look. Probably zoom back out a little bit. The world, okay, much better. So, I'm um, and on the other one. Um, that's odd. Let's try rebooting the world. Okay, much better. Now, I didn't like the uh, exponential fade on the first crossfade, so I'm going to remove that and see how it sounds and looks. Um, that's odd. Let's try rebooting the world. Okay, much better. And that's fine. Now, if I want to make something stand out for particular reasons, like, uh, again, this is a short, quick video that's going to be on YouTube about a project. So I may want to show off that project's logo. So I have a pre-made render item that I made in uh, Photoshop, I actually. So. And for anyone who's wondering, yes, I actually do prefer to use the uh, Windows 8.1. Uh, start menu, metro, modern UI, whatever they call it. I actually like it. It keeps my desktop clean, very clean, and I can organize my main, my dev tools, production tools, and I can go into Photoshop. If you hate me, don't hate me. Um, I create most of my images through my Photoshop stuff. So if I go back to um, the Minecraft 5 world screen, you'll see that this is the same image that I utilized for um, the beginning of that video. Matter of fact, I'll show you um, this portion. 
And this is where, for me, the Adobe Suite, you know, really shines. I can easily switch back and forth, import media, export media, from images, audio, to uh, video. So, I want to utilize just my logo. So, I created an image just for the logo. And you can see it's actually bigger, it's massive, and it's more in your face. And you can see the faded out um, essence of Zen thing here. If anything is out of place, by the way, feel free to note it in the chat. Um, I do have the chat pulled up on a second secondary monitor for uh, my server system. Um, so from this point on, I now that I have or I have created the logo itself, I save that. I do. And if anyone else uses Photoshop, if you ever going if you're ever going to post those images on a website or online, you want to make sure you not only optimize it through you know the right file type. So if you're going to have a transparent background, it should be PNG. But you should also make sure you save for the web, and you can do this by doing Alt Shift Control S. I know this is a video about how I do editing, but this all ties in together. So I apologize if it feels like you know off on a tangent. So you save it for the save for the web, and it'll make sure that the file size is as small as possible with as uh, least amount of deg degradation, degradation, yeah, to the quality of the image. I make sure that I have the convert to the sRGB, uh, and make sure that the preview is set to uh, monitor color. And yes, transparency because it's important. If you remove transparency, because if you don't mind having a non-transparent background for a logo, or if your logo doesn't use a transparent background, you might you might want to just remove that because it will make the file smaller. That is a very even every single kilobit makes a difference when you're dealing with the web. This little nuance. So now that I have those things created. I usually find my uh, so I, I usually have three folders open, my audio folders for all my um, audio stuff that's, that's OBS, um, my OBS recordings, and basically the images that I'm working with. So when I have the image that I want to import to the video, I click the video. It's a PNG optimized for the web, even though it doesn't need to because I'm putting it in the video. But I will use this on the web later as well. So win win. I click, I drag, and I import it to the uh, project folder on the bottom left in the main section. So if you jump back to that, you'll see that it has now the... Oh, it, it, didn't, it didn't import. One second. Doo -doo -doo. There we are. And I, put, I make sure I put it into the folder, the bin that I'm working um, into the prep work because if you're going to use something that's very similar to Adobe Premiere Pro, I create my projects based on a series, which I'll, I'll show you more a bit in, in a bit later. But every video that I have inside of a series project gets its own folder. So, huzzah. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So from here, I'm going to make sure I have multiple video layers for my video editing. I'm also going to make sure that I save because it's important to save often in case you run out of RAM and things want to reboot on you for no damn reason. Talking to you, computer. Um, you want to just go ahead and drag your Minecraft logo to the part where the video starts. And then you want to make sure that it's going to fit for the entirety of the video. So you just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a single image, so you can actually make the duration of the, uh, the image as long as you, why am I zooming in? I want to zoom out. As long as you need it to be. So yeah, usually I would wait till I do all the rest of the cutting, but I'm just showing a point. Now, from here, I want to see where the video is. Now, as you can see, <laughs> the logo is right in the damn middle of the screen, which I do not like, but it can actually be handy. So this is where it caught me. If you were in the um, the Game Jolt chat, <clears throat> excuse me, Courtney said, you know, editing is very simple if you do things simply. So what I could do from this point on is take this image and go to effects. Oh no, not effects. It's image effects control. Do motion. Click the drop down menu. You go to scaling. I can shrink it and then do the uh, position. Right, select motion and actually drag this off into the corner somewhere. Like out of, you know, important stuff. And then, bam, voila, it's done. 
But because I told you I am a um, a sadist or a masochist, which, which one enjoys torturing themselves? Whatever. I'm going to make this more difficult on my end. So I'm going to undo my changes and I'm going to keep it where it is currently. And the reason why is because when I when they do this transition, I want them to be you know just just uh, if I can actually line it up correctly. I want to be in their face. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to deselect the video one and select the video two. And I'm going to press my hotkey, control D, and it's going to apply that same fade. As so. Hey guys. Uh, hey guys. Um, hey guys. Now, when this is in their face, I'm going to go into the same effects control. I'm going to go to position. I'm going to make sure that this slider over here is all the way to the left. I'm going to click this timing effect because we're going to do some animation, some very simple animation. I don't want to sound like, you know, we're going to draw frame by frame by frame by frame. But in terms of video production, this is a form of animation. So we're going to click this clock symbol. And it's going to create a keyframe for us. Now I'm going to slide all the way off into the part of the video before things start to move. Or maybe in about 10 seconds into the, into the conversation. So let's see. That's 31. Hey two, guys. Um, three, 34. So it may surprise 36. you. Now, to me, six, about five or six seconds is, a, is the optimal time for the person has watched the screen long enough. They have been it automatically saved. That's awesome. The viewer has seen the logo Minecraft, the five worlds, for about six seconds. It's, it's probably little too much for them to see like I, they want to see the actual game they want to see the shaders they want to see the actual footage of the video game now so what I'm gonna do is create another keyframe here now it's probably hard to see in this area because the video is so long that's why you can actually zoom in and see the two different keyframes and you can select you know different points Now the reason why I created two keyframes is because I want the first section to be this then I want to go about maybe four or five seconds further from here. So, or maybe, uh, and oh, uh, tip of the tip of the hat, back of the finger. If you're using Premiere Pro, you can actually go here, and then let's say you know six plus four. Six, ten. Uh, do I want to go with five or four? Generally speaking, I can just go ahead and set it to like where I want it to be in the in the time set. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So now I want at this at this moment for the image here to be in the bottom left corner. So I'm going to create another keyframe here and then go ahead and do Oh, actually I think I messed up somewhere. One moment. <coughs> ah, excuse me. So what I forgot to do earlier is to set a animation keyframe for the scaling as well. So I'm just going to go back to the first keyframe for the position Add one for the scale at the same place. Go to the next keyframe, add another um, scale keyframe, and then go to my third keyframe, add another keyframe for the scale, and then drop this. And it's going to be maybe about so and so. And then go back to the position. And then you'll see that it's creating this diagonal string on the camera or on the video that you're watching. So it's going to move Minecraft to the bottom left. So if I go all the way back now to the beginning of the main part of the video and play it. Hey guys. Um, so it may surprise you or may not, not sure which. Uh, I'm actually working on some Minecraft-esque material for the. And there we go. The animation is very simple. A Twitch channel on YouTube. Tell me whatever. Uh, I don't have a Twitch channel on YouTube, but I do have a YouTube channel, so the, the, um, as a matter of fact, I might be able to do MooCow, MooBot, start up frame. Um, no worries if your video started to buffer, um, you haven't missed the main portion just yet, but I will be exporting this to the YouTube channel, which, w which should be popping in the chat rather soon. Just give me one moment. Uh, 
There you go. So, um, awesome. Yeah, Mubat just posted the um, the link to the YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe. So yeah, um, if you missed the uh, transition of the animation, um, it was rather slow for, in my in my opinion. The uh, the movement was very you know drawn out, and I don't like for this particular set for it to move that slow. So what I'm going to do is zoom in some more. It's probably too far. And I'm going to select these two keyframes, and I'm going to move them closer to their previous keyframes. And if you're wondering why I needed three keyframes for both position and scale, I wanted to make sure that there was a keyframe for the start position, and then you wanna make sure there, there's a intermediate keyframe so that if I only had two, from the moment the, the image popped on the screen, it would start moving. It, if, if these two middle um, keyframe icons were not there, it would just start moving from the beginning. So either you can go with the uh, easier route of not having the starter keyframes and just have these change in the secondary area, but I don't like that. I like to make sure it's it's, it's a coding habit in my head. I uh. so yeah. So let's see how the new look is now. Hey guys, um, so it may surprise you or may not. Not sure which. Uh, I'm actually working on. Still rather slow. I'm gonna move it in even closer. Try it one more time. So it may surprise you or may not, not sure which. Uh, and for me, that is so much better. The uh, the, the, the faster drawn, um, you know, movement. So from here, I can just make sure I save it in case it crashes. And then go back to, you know, editing the video as a whole. So. I'm going to go ahead and slow this down or lower the machine volume so you don't hear the fast paced screeching of me sliding through the video. I'm utilizing the Sphinx texture pack I'm using 32x this time to better help with the, uh, the frame rate and performance. So currently with Optifine, um, the B7 edition. I'm able to usually keep above 30 frames per second, and this is with the um, is it pronounced Seuss or Seus? Not percent sure. Um, shaders. It's very nice shaders actually. Um, all right, so from here, I'm noticing things are gonna bleak out around here. Audio. So. I just want to know what what are your guys' opinions? That's fine. There's some nice shots of the area. Lit. I like the water a lot. The water is one part one of my favoriteest things. Hey, that is that's a very fair statement. Just as a very fair statement, um, I if you notice, there's a, I don't like the, the sound, you know, um, arrogant here, but uh, there are a good number of high quality videos on my channel, and you'll notice that I'm still under 300 subs. That's because I don't like spamming the channel um, in every five seconds on places, and I don't like people to subscribe if they're not gonna watch the video. It's a mixed bag channel, so. People who like the gaming content sometimes don't like the programming content, so they won't subscribe for that reason, and that is perfectly fine. You know, I, I want people to subscribe if they're interested in the content that's on the channel. Otherwise, we redirect them to the website in the video hub that we're currently working on. So, totally understand, dude. And uh, matter of fact, I support you in the fact that the the statement, uh, "You get my sub, you are doing good." It's just the way the help channels know when they're good. That is, I. As a matter of fact, I actually may put that on a quote. <laughs> but yeah. So let's see. Now, if you notice, you know, firsthand as well, you'll see even if it's in the small right-hand corner of the the uh, Premiere Pro user interface, you can probably tell that there's a lot of graininess, and that's because of you know OBS and 
Minecraft because of it's written in Java and it's like this really weird algorithm in terms of encoding of the bitstream. It's very rare to get the full quality of Minecraft. So I, I will be trying other uh, software recording, um, capturing stuff. But um, until now, I'm actually still pleased with the quality that's being shown in post recording. But if I show you a screenshot, however, uh, let's see if I can actually do that. Uh, so with shaders and all, that's probably not the best uh, image. So this is a image of uh, on server playing and you see how the lighting effects for the glowstones are very you know uh, present and it's very in your face about it when you look at the screenshot it looks you know pretty much spot on aside from the fact that i have it still zoomed out a little bit it looks pretty much spot on but when you see this same scene in a recording of it using obs you'll see you know a loss of quality and again it's because of the encoding of the bitstream because minecraft is running in java and it's very hard to have that type of performance Matter of fact, this is the picture. This is the picture of the same town, and you can probably tell the difference in quality over the, uh, you know, the the smoothness of the stones, the shadows, the uh, the the foliage. I think that's wheat. And the main goal that this video is, is, is heading for is trying to get the best quality of the same um, thing that I'm seeing. On the video which may actually never happen because I don't have a uh, capture card to rip the video out you know without lossless but that's a uh, besides the point but I digress so yeah that's pretty much how I edit and th that's actually very simple go through find places you want to cut you cut you drop frame per second is probably reason enough to just stick with this Look at the horsies. Oh, man. Oh. And yes, I do have it set. What? Yeah, so the leaves are indeed um, waving in the air. Jump through. Neon glow. So yeah, I'll let you guys uh, give me some feedback into which one you like better, the uh, Seis or the Kuda. Now, if this was a very important video, when I will, when I watch like these playbacks here, um, that's not the point that it's at. Not... Right here. Yeah, when I'm at this part of the video. What I would do is say, I want them to see the image quality because the point of the, the the main point of the video is to do a comparison between two different shaders. What I should have done is remove the uh, frames per second information or at least toggle the um, the UI to disappear. So if I was if it was really important, I would go back, load the load the the world up, get into the same spot, and make it the same part of the day, re-record. Cut this section out, add the new set of video in, and just let the video play as people watch the the, the waters. It actually it it may be in the light factors of um, Seus. And man, those god rays! My goodness, you cannot you can, you cannot get past the god rays. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so let me guys, uh, guys, let me know what you think. This is a quick sneak peek to uh, the future project, which will be titled uh, Minecraft: The Five Worlds. So, let me know. All right, and that's the end of the actual video. Uh, by the way, one of my jobs is a friend of people.
That's a very generous statement. And I appreciate and value that statement as well. So at the end of the video, you know, I went ahead and did my little closer. And I don't think like the, the, the breaking up the menu and doing the save world, quit, and etc. is not necessary. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the video forward enough. Craft the five worlds. Let me know. Right there. When I said let me know, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna zoom in, in this area. And what I'm gonna do is right now. No, I press the wrong button. Let me know. Right here. So I'm gonna cut here and I'm going to see exactly when does that menu come up. And I'm gonna use my arrow keys to go frame by frame and find the last one where the menu is not present. So you can probably see right here the frame is going down. Right. And I found it. So literally at the 29th frame of the 10 minute 59 second marker, you know, the menu pops up. So I'm going to find the frame where the menu still is not present. I'm going to undo my previous cut and then cut this new area and delete the end, move back the Minecraft the five worlds. And I'm going to save currently. And then I'm going to add the, uh, well, usually if this was like the end end, I do the uh, fade out. But because uh, I do still utilize this my uh, my channel's information and stuff, I'm going to add in my um, my outro. So what I have already you know pre created is uh, using um, other Adobe Suites. I can't remember which one it was. Um, was it in Adobe or the production? I think it's production After Effects. Uh, products, animation, those are top sliders, so it should be rather, uh, um, After Effects, uh, production, um, outro. So I have two versions of my outro. No, that's not right, because I have updated stuff. Or, or is that updated? I think it's updated. So what we're gonna do is find that and um, bring up uh, Premiere Pro again. I'm going to minimize, I'm gonna create a new bin and I'm gonna call this Essence of Zen Assets. And this is pretty much where all of my basic stuff goes into. So inside of this band, I'm gonna create another band. I'm gonna call it outros. And I'm gonna slide in my main two outros here. I'm gonna throw it in. And I appreciate that justice. I really do. Matter of fact, uh, I was going to stream uh, Shadows of Mordor today. Because I'm trying, since uh, I'm done with my college semester, I'm getting ready to do my summer schedule for production videos, streaming, and etc. But I'm actually going to take the rest of the week off to do uh, work on the website, work on some programs, and work on the production side. And next week, I'm going to implement my um, streaming schedule. So it's going to be Sunday is going to be our community-driven uh, streams. Uh, Wednesday is going to be my random gaming streams. So there's that Shadow of Mordor, uh, probably Minecraft, uh, DC Universe Online, anything, you know, Warframe, anything that I want to play randomly, or anything that someone may um, suggest. And then Saturdays is going to be the XCOM live streams over on YouTube. And then afterwards, I'll be game for pretty much anything. So on over on Twitch. So that's that's what this, I'm going to do a video about that later as well. So yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna double click these outros and find out which one that I wanna use. So typically speaking, my outros are as stated, and you'll see rather so. So that's actually my outro. My outro is the Essence of Zen logo with the, uh, we call it the origami um, edges. 
And um, we have these little sections at the bottom, and they're basically used for annotations. So one annotation goes to our website, essenceofzen.org. The other annotation is for subscribing if you wish it. And the other uh, annotation is going to our Google Plus um, group page, which is probably add a plus, because when people see Google, they probably are baffled by what the hell do I have a Google button on this. Whatever. Below that are basically the shows for our channel. Again, our channel is not the common type of channels for YouTube. We do tutorials, you know, entertainment, uh, random things. It's, it's, it's a mixed bag. So what we try to have is uh, our main set of videos, which could be anything. It could send you to a playlist or it send you to the video hub itself. Or it can send you to like the technological software side of things, like the Python tutorials, or send you to another Let's Play. But at the same time, we have other outros that switch up the um, the, the thing. So you still see the video hub icon, the tutorial icon, and then one for unboxing icons. Because if we have a um, technological video, we may want to capitalize on if people are watching this particular video, they may care more about technology and software rather than the entertainment side of the channel. So we may just show them only you know the main. Uh, uh, the main genre of stuff that they're watching currently, and vice versa. Now, I'm pretty sure I had some other outro stuff. Oh well. Did the string stop? Give me one second. I just want to double check the stream on my end to make sure. It, okay, yeah, it, it's still going. So anyway, so yeah, so in this case, since it's going to be um, a preview and it's very game heavy, I'm going to go ahead and use the LOTW one. That's the one with the Skyrim. Uh, version on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and import that to the end. And I'm going to add a video effect for a dip to black. So instead of having that cross fade where it just kind of fades into the new video, it's going to be a blackout. So you're going to have this here. Actually, let me move that back and have the dip to black feature at the end of this video. Move that forward and then do the same thing for the exponential fade for the audio. So then when they say, or at the end of my video, and usually my tagline is as follows. Um, damn, what is, what is my, my ending tagline? I can't remember. It's, uh, that pretty much wraps it up, guys. Thank you for watching the video. As always, feel free to subscribe. And that, that whole gist, and then it's, um, I will see you in the next one. But until then, as always, take care. Now, I left that tagline out of this video because it's not a... Real, I'll see you the next time. This is just a sneak peek and a questionnaire for the video. So I, I didn't have that audio tagline there. So it's going to go from the let me know, guys, and then it's going to hit the outro. Let me know. And so on. And at the, at the end, I usually add another dip to black. So if someone, for whatever reason, watches the full extent of the video, it doesn't just have one of those abrupt cutoffs. I, I hate abrupt cutoffs. I, I just do. So add the expensive fade there as well. So you see it fade out. Like so. Fair
And that's pretty much wraps it up for basic video editing for me. Um, again, like I told you, uh, fr from this point on, I would go to edit. I would um, make sure that the project timeline selected, edit uh, or file rather. Or is it export media? Or is it project clip sequence? It's been a minute since, since I've edited. I know the the, key, the the shortcut is Control M. I just don't remember. Oh, export. Here we are. You know, um, export the media. And what I would do is, so it's important to know, you know, the platform that you're uh, gonna upload your video to. So I, I have no idea what's the average or what's the recommended set for, um, like Vimeo or Daily. Was it Daily Planet or was it Daily Host? Daily Motion, whatever that video site is called. But for YouTube. Uh, I pretty much always use like well I want to make sure that it's the entire sequence. Um, I like to use the format of uh, H.264. Now, if you listen to a lot of um, people from the uh, Eastern area, like you know Europe, uh, Scandinavia, uh, Russia, you know they say H H.264, but it's you know I'm American H.264. From here, um, it'll it will you know reformat. Now for presets, I have my own custom preset, which is HD uh, 1080p, and I have one for 60 frames per second and one for 30 frames per second. But if you don't have your own custom uh, presets involved, you just want to scroll down. Um, they have one for YouTube, but I yeah, I don't bother with. So they have like you know YouTube HD and stuff. I don't prefer to use Adobe's um, setup for YouTube HD. It should be totally fine. I, I just don't like it because, you know, in case I want to upload more places that's not just optimized for YouTube, I usually just go with HD uh, 1080p because th this video is, you know, 1920 by 1080p, so it's 1080p. I do HD 1080p 29.97 uh, for 30 frames per second. And that's literally the same as my... Um, uh, custom one. That's it. It's just easier for me to find. And thank you for the Facebook link. I will make sure I add you or at least um, follow because I'm pretty sure you probably linked a page and not your personal uh, link. Or you did. Either or, I'm not sure. Let's find out. Ah, it is your actual personal account. I will send you a friend request on my personal account as well. There you are. And that's that's pretty much it. And I will either, you know, queue for export or export right away. So because I'm gonna show you a little bit more, I'm going to queue it. And what that does is it saves it for exporting later. Sweet. All right. So now that the media encoder is, is up and running, you'll see that it has the prep work with the H.264 with my custom preset and the um, oh, I forgot to change the output. So I'm going to click the output file and I'm going to change this to uh, productions on my Cerberus drive and I'm going to set it to a Minecraft folder. And then prepwork.mp4 save and now it's ready so when I when I get ready to export it you know and actually render you know I'll click the green arrow but I'm not ready to do it just yet so I'm gonna minimize that so I believe um, that's that's pretty much a little bit more in depth of what I utilize for simple editing I'm gonna show you a, uh, a more advanced complicated you know when I pull my hair out type of uh, project so if I go here uh, let me make sure this is saved open recent projects programming projects hmm 
Hmm. I'll do rip security. This is an oldie but goodie. So, what I told you previously was <laughs> my form of, of easy editing with the animation and everything. Now, before that, I showed you that you, know, you can easily do cut, you know, uh, slices, concatenize. That, make, that means it makes the video shorter. And that's very simple editing, and that's fine. It's quick and it's easy. But uh, in the beginning or in the middle of 2014, or early 2014, me and Lewis, Lewis is the other admin of Essence of Zen, which is a, a bigger group in general. We decided that we want to make sure that the production quality of our videos starts to push into a positive direction, which means a higher standard of video production. So what you can see here is multiple layers, multiple sounds. If I do the audio um, bars, you can see that it, there's a lot of uh, uh, fade-ins, fade-outs. Um, I manage the audio points and keyframes by hand for videos like this. And the reason point is, it's kind of what we're trying to go for. So we usually have an intro, and this is what I look like, by the way. This is actually my, uh, uh, this was my first camera, the one that really sucks, so it looks really grainy and it's very dark. So I apologize, because it's, it's an old video. Hello, my name is Zeno Kami, and today we're bringing you another episode. And we have our, what they call in the video production world, lower thirds. And that's in the little areas that pop off from the bottom, you know, basically, a third of the screen and give you information like my name and my title and then once I do the intro of the mini series for web security but mainly targeting the Facebook security methods and it cues the intro and this is the standard g generic intro that we made in um, Adobe After Effects <laughs> And then it'll jump right into the main core of, or the main point of the video, which is for this particular video is two-step authentications. Okay, so in our previous video, we did the introduction to the real things behind. So if you see here, we have, and this is a little bit advanced, not so much advanced. I have a, the top uh, left of the screen is a mini cut of the previous video because this is it's part of a, a bigger series so when i upload this to youtube i make sure there's an annotation around it clicking to the previous video which is actually this video for active sessions which is also very complicated as you can see the various layers for um uh, indications which is one of my favorite things that i do from here is you want to play on the emotions of the viewer. So the point of, the, of this particular video is about Facebook active sessions. There was a rumor about active sessions being the NSA spying on you on Facebook, which the NSA do spy on you, but not through the active sessions. If you have multiple active sessions that are not in your locations, you've been hacked or compromised from another user in that part of the world. And when I say this, I want to play on that emotion, but without getting too uh, agitated towards the users. I try to go for a bit of comedy, so I use certain images to try to play off that seriousness with a bit of the, you know, comedic effect. It's January 2nd, as of recording this particular video, it should go up tomorrow for January 3rd. But anyway, let's jump into the issue that we're having for 2015. There are a lot of speculations about web security for 2015 because of the whole NSA, Lizard Squad, and people are just flipping, flipping balls to be more precise. So when you're doing long-term videos like this and they're, you know, very important, and I, I get it, you know, this, you guys are, you know, mainly, um, you know, let's players and gamers, but even then, if you're going to have, like, these special add-on effects, you want to be able to try to tinker with what the, the viewer is thinking. So if this was a video play of Mega Man and you made a joke about, you know, Zero looking really feminine, you may have, like, a small, um, what's it called, Rule 63? you know, the gender bent version of a character and you may have like the female version of Zero slowly slide into the screen and then like shoot away and that helps enhance the video and that's the purpose behind certain things that we do and that's where things get complicated when you make those small animations, those small thought out things and such and whatnot. So going back to the second video there's a small clip from the first video and etc. And for me, this particular video was a, a bit difficult because I used multiple video sources. So there was, um, you know, the camera. There were the previous videos from the, 
MP, uh, MP4 files. And also, I recorded my phone's screen and I had to purely represent that on this video when my camera records in like, uh, I think 30 frames per second and my phone recorded in 25 frames per second. And usually that's not a big deal, but when you try to sync in terms of the video, not just audio, but the video, that means the phone is going to move somewhat faster than the actual video that their viewers are watching. So it's hard to sync that. So you had to freeze certain frames. You know. Fake accounts. I honestly didn't just feel like doing it. And it would have made um, video production take maybe two days longer. So anyway, what I'm going to do here is actually go to Play Store. And I'm going to search for... It's an enable two-step verification to protecting your account from hijacking. I mean, it's quite literally in the description alone of what it actually is. So, if we're going to go ahead and read a little bit more. And, as you can see, you know, some things like that. And, one thing, if, if you're ever going to show off more stuff in a video than you, you know, usually would think about, you may have to, um, be sure to blank out important information, sensitive data, as they call it. So, so in, in this section right here, I use, you know, red oval circles to highlight main areas. And I probably could have did it better. I could have, you know, had circles specifically for each individual section of the, of the thing. But I just, I just reused one that I made on the quick hand. But at the same time, I also display some sensitive information. And I made sure that I have this block to block it. And I would remove it to show you what it's blocking. But this video is also going to go on YouTube. So I'm not. So yeah, so you always want to make sure that you block certain information. So when you input codes like here, for instance, right before the block shows up, the 000, that's not the code. I'm getting ready to input a very sensitive code. So I block it. And I make sure that it, it, it shows you third party authenticator is working correctly. Because anytime you have a distraction away from the video and you want them to know if something worked, you got to pull their attention to the indicator that says this did work so even though you did not see me put the code in and hit confirm you can imagine that in under under the little blocking icon this is what happens and here's why and this is how and you know it confirms it so those are the more complicated aspects of the video production side of things that i try to focus on and try to improve on constantly in the, in my production and etc and that pretty much wraps it up for the uh the stream of how i do video editing so um, I hope it wasn't too long. I know it's like about like an hour and I apologize for that long lengthy concept, but hey, you guys asked for it. I delivered. I think I uh, hope I delivered. Um, yeah. So before we go, I'm going to do a shameless plug since I have you all here. Um, let me bring up. Uh, we're still working on our website. Um, since it's the summer, we're gonna we're gonna have plenty of time to finally roll out the things that we've been working on. But we do. I, was, I don't want Yahoo search. Uh, we do have our website that we're working on still, and we have a video hub for you all to check out our vid. If it ever freaking loads, load. I know I have a lot of stuff running in the background. But still, load, damn you. So, yeah. So, we have our website that we're, that we're working on. Um, feel free to check it out over the summer. As nothing still loads. For some reason. Why well, you no load? Well, I did say we were working on stuff. So, that's... Oh, there it is. Okay. Activities, updates, and whatnot. Um, so, we have a video hub. And we have stuff for applications and whatnot. Um, all this will be updated later on. We should talk on Facebook sometimes. You seem like a nice guy. I'm, I'm always down for, you know, com um, I almost said conversating. Conversing with other individuals and etc. Uh, I'm a very open individual myself. I'm just usually also a very busy individual. So if I don't respond on the fly, I apologize for that. You know, feel free to bug me about it. But yeah. But yeah, so we will be updating these things constantly over the summer. 
uh, to the video hub, we're going to add the cast and certain events that we do, such as the Sunday community live streams. So we have our basic Essence of Zen TV stuff. We have our software site for Python tutorials, Java tutorials, online security tutorials, Chrome tutorials, Windows tutorials, and we're starting OBS tutorials rather soon. We have one video out as it is already. Uh, hardware stuff, we have unboxings. We're going to have um, some soldering and embedded systems creation videos, hopefully this summer as well. Our gaming stuff, so our Let's Play immersive series like uh, Skyrim, Legend of the Wolf Thing, our XCOM Enemy Unknown stuff. We're going to get back into the forest since there's been a mini updates. We're going to get back to Far Cry 3. We're going to have our Starbound, Pi Starbound Pirates of the Nexus videos coming up rather, rather soon. And then we're going to add the Minecraft stuff over here once that's ready. Uh, and we're going to add some more anime and manga stuff relatively soon. Plus our new show recall Table to the Nth Degree. But I digress, that's pretty much everything you need to know. If you are interested in gaming alongside our community, we also have a Steam group. Um, let me find... Let's do the library first. Um, do, 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 do. Groups. We do have a official Essence of Zen Steam group called The Garden of Zen that you can join and find others you wish to play alongside with. Um, it's a growing community. Again, we're going to start doing community-driven live stream uh, multiplayer events on Sundays. Things like Don't Starve Together. Uh, it's called Orion Prelude. Called uh, DC Universe Online. Warframe. Pretty much anything you guys want to join in on is possible. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you need an invite, just let me know. I'm Zenokami on Steam. I'm pretty much Zenokami everywhere. So guys, thank you so much for watching this long, un nearly unbearable stream. If you're watching this on YouTube, more power to you for, you know, etc. But I will catch you all in the next video. But until then, as always, and this is my tagline, take care. And I did not set up the cover correctly. This is what happens when you do a impromptu stream. You forget to have all your songs and stuff ready.